Good morning, All Souls Community Church. It's Wednesday, May 27th. I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend and that this week has started off a little better than maybe mine has. For you see, this week has been a really tough start. I think the extra day off, uh, it, it just allowed for more time to, to be still, to be thinking. And for so many of us, we spend our days and our lives, for that matter, just going, 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 going. We're on the hamster wheel, we never get off. And even in this quarantine time, for, for some of you, things have slowed down. For others, like myself, they got even faster. But no matter where you're at, there's, there's that sense in which we, we get on the hamster wheel, no matter what the hamster wheel is, and we just go through each day. But the, the crazy part about the quarantine, and specifically holidays during quarantine, when you're used to having a house full of people or going away, and instead you're just sitting, is it gives opportunity to think. To think about the things in your life and in your history that you wish were different, that, that thing about you that you wish you could, you could hope would change, that is, is probably the biggest thing about yourself that you don't like, or, or the biggest mistake that you wish you never made, or, or the things, in other words, that we tend not to want to think about, that we push down, and, and therefore when we're going on the hamster wheel, we never give ourselves time to think about. But when you slow down, you do. You start to think about them. And the question that I have for us this morning, as if you're at all relating to this, is, is what do you do with that? Well, I think the Bible is full of stories of God slowing things down for people, showing us, showing us all, the places in our lives where we have basically said to God, it's impossible because I can't. Where God instead turns and says, it is possible because I can. It's impossible because I can't, God. And God's like, I'm not asking you to. I'm asking you to trust. And this week we've been unpacking story after story of this impossible God with crazy instructions saying, do this. It doesn't seem to make sense. Like to Joshua when he's going to go march around the city of Jericho and, and, pl and play trumpets and then scream at the top of his lungs and then a four foot wa uh, thick wall is going to fall down. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Today I want to tell the story uh, that's found in 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of a man named Naaman who happened to be the general of the army of Syria, who was a very successful, mighty man of valor. He was by all uh, rights and accounts a success, a smashing success, but uh, Naaman was also a leper. And if you remember, because we've talked about this before, leprosy in the ancient world was was a horrific disease. They thought it was a disease that you could spread through touching. Uh, different parts of your, your body would, would shrivel up and fall off. You'd get all sorts of limbs that would go, uh, uh, get all cramped up like this, and, and, and you'd have claw hands, and, and your, your nose would fall off, or your ear would fall off, and it was a horrible disease, and you would be separated from people, and you'd have to live in leper colonies, and it was just miserable. Well, for Naaman, uh, we don't know the story, the text doesn't give us the details of, as to how he kept separate from the other soldiers or protected them or if he did that at all. But what the story does tell us is that he had leprosy and it was the one thing about his life that was most visibly wrong, most visibly broken, the one thing that caused him the most shame. But as the text tells us, on one of their raids, they happen to capture an Israelite girl who tells Naaman, um, or Naaman's um, servants, other servants, that there's a man in Samaria named Elisha who happens to be the prophet of God who can heal leprosy. And so Naaman, against all hope, gets in his, in his chariot and he goes and he brings a whole entourage with him. And, and they basically, they come to Elisha's house and, and they, they're essentially demanding that Elisha heal them. Um, well, Elisha sends word and says, here's what I want you to do. I just, I want you to go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River and you'll be healed. And it says that Naaman got angry. And I love this. I love it because it, it, it points and it touches a part of our lives and our hearts that I think so much of the time we're afraid to talk about or admit. Naaman got angry. Why? Because it, it wasn't going to happen the way that he wanted. And there was so much of him that was undoubtedly afraid to believe it could happen at all. And so Naaman, the text tells us, gets angry because he was expecting the prophet to come out and wave his hand over and call upon the name of his Lord and, and that Naaman would be healed. Instead, he wants him to go wash in the river seven times, or to put it differently, he wants him to be exposed. 
Naaman's already ashamed of his leprosy. And now he's saying, you want me to go and wash seven times in the Jordan River and take the risk of being shamed all the more? What if it doesn't work? It doesn't sound like it's supposed to sound. It sounds like it's gonna take too long, seven times, and it's gonna expose me too much. Dipping in the Jordan River, and it's at that point that one of Naaman's servants comes to him and says, but master, don't you see? It's actually really good news. He said, wash and be clean. In other words, the, the desire of your heart, the thing you're most afraid to admit wanting and needing, he sees it. And he, there's a way to be healed if you'll only trust and obey. And as the story goes, Naaman does exactly that. He trusts, he goes and he dips seven times. And he says he came out and his, his skin was as smooth as a newborn baby. He says, Talk about a miracle. Talk about a miracle. Why are, we why are we sharing this today? Well, because of what we started off talking about. That there are areas in each of our lives where we are really afraid to believe that God can help us. That he can heal us, especially when the things that God tells us to do don't make sense to us. And so we push back against them. And can I, can I dare to push in a little bit? in the area of shame. The area of shame oftentimes is, is, is interwoven. It's found in the context of relationship. We're ashamed because of something that's happened to us or something that's happened through us. And therefore we wanna push back. And yet God writes to us in 1 John chapter one, he says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and listen, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is a way forward that on the front end feels like it's going to expose us too much. It feels like it's gonna hurt us too much. What if it doesn't work? What if it's embarrassing? What if people see? What if it means that I have to let go of my pride and control and yield to God's way? Can I let you know? You do. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. It is going to expose. It is gonna feel worse in the short term than it, than it will in the long term. It is gonna be harder than you thought. It is gonna require more than you could imagine. It is, it is. And it may take longer than you thought. It may be several episodes of trying to work through these things, but can I tell you it's so worth it, why? Because God has promised that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse. He is in the business as he promised through his prophet Ezekiel, I will put my spirit within you. When you simply ask, I will put my spirit within you and I will wash you with clean water and you will be clean. It's been his promise from the beginning. God knows what is most broken in us. He knows what we're most ashamed of. He's not calling us to him to put us through some hoops so that maybe, maybe, maybe if we prove ourselves, he'll heal us. No, no, no. He's calling us to trust that his way always works even if it feels like it's taking too long and it's exposing us too much. His way always works. This is his world. He made it to work this way because he loves us, because he's our dad, because he wants to heal us. His promise is to do that. And so wherever, friends, you are stuck in shame today, you are stuck in fear and trying to control, can I encourage you? that your God is inviting you today to come and try it his way. And if you're like, well, I've tried that already, can I encourage you all the more? If it's not working in your time frame, perhaps it's your time frame and not God's method that isn't working. Perhaps it needs to take a little longer so that it can go a little deeper inside of here, of your heart. For there's much that God seeks to and promises to make clean and whole and he promises to do so tenderly, patiently, so that he doesn't crush us as he's doing it. Today is another invitation to step into that plan and watch as God's world works his way. I pray that you will this Wednesday share this good news and live into it today. God be with you.